Wales, it's quite a good turnout here. <laughs> uh, so welcome to my actually first ever talk, so just spare with me a little bit. Um, so the main question is, why is this called Down and Back Again? Um, now I wanted to relate this to like a really good fictional character that went on an adventure, so I chose the Hobbit. Uh, I, now, I'm not a Hobbit, that's a disclaimer. I'm a bit taller than them, uh, and I don't have hairy feet. Uh, but, where the <laughs> <laughs> but where the similarity does lie in is in the fact that we both went on a journey and today I'd like to take you through my own personal journey and my experience as an industrial placement student at HX. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you already know who I am, uh, but for the, new fa uh, for, blah, blah, blah. for the new faces here, my name is Pierre and I started last July as an industrial placement student and I'm currently in the lounge spot. Uh, so before diving into the talk, I'd like everyone to take uh, a minute to just think on these three points. So first one being, where were you then? So before you start at HX or when you started in your role at HX. And look at how far you've come since you joined. And when can you go next? What, what is your next milestone that you want to achieve? Um, so for, I know a lot of uni students are here and the future IPs. Uh, so I thought I'd just kind of go to go through a do's and don'ts for your first day. Um, I won't lie to you. I was incredibly nervous on my first day. I was really scared, but also so excited because this was and is my very first job. I did some mentoring here and there in uni, but this was my very first step into the working world. Um, I remember staying up until three o'clock in the morning, going over all my JavaScript skills and trying to just retain as much information as I can so I could look really good on first day. I'd probably recommend getting an early night instead because <laughs> I was so tired the first day. And don't expect too much of yourself on your first day because you already hired for a reason and you already made that really good first impression when you got that phone call saying you've got the job. And the most important one is judge your surroundings because on my first day I came here an hour before my manager did and I came up in a three piece suit <laughs> on the hottest change, hottest stage in life. Uh, don't do that. Um, I'm not saying don't make an effort, but just don't ever do it like I did because I looked exactly like that. Where I was so out of place and everyone was wearing shorts and jeans and yeah, I was just so hot. Um, and as I said, I was very excited and I wanted to work on so many things I could get my hand on. Um, but that being said, I was still quite nervous. My first ticket felt impossible, but looking back at it now, I actually started laughing and going, why the hell was I so scared about this? It was just changing a couple of variables. And the funny thing is that you'll always look back at your very first ticket and see that things weren't as hard as you made them out to be, because the main difference now is that you have a lot more understanding and a better knowledge than you did when you started. Um, so here are a couple of things I did as a new starter. Yeah, I actually Googled up platforms for background reading. Uh, now the first thing is, good luck when you're trying it, because I, my first day I was throwing so much information here and there, there were so many jargons like TripApp, Happy and Render, which are core platforms here. And I got really frustrated and annoyed because I literally could not remember anything. So I went home and I thought, let me do what I do best, I'm just going to Google everything. And then I couldn't find anything, so I came back the next day and I said, guys, I've Googled everything but I couldn't find anything. And then I realised that it was a very silly mistake because everyone was laughing and one person went, oh no, you Googled it. Uh, <laughs> so just a tip for anyone who tries to do that. Um, the next one is, I was so scared to ask questions. And don't feel shy or scared to ask things, because when you start, you'll have so many questions. And that's completely normal. And I know it sounds a bit cliche, but there really aren't any silly questions. Okay, there might be some silly questions. Uh, but the only thing to remember is that asking the same questions over and over, over, and over again will kind of make it look like you're not, list you're not listening to the information. So try to listen rather than just hearing things. And if you don't know the answer, you're not going to know until you ask someone, so people expect you to ask questions and it also looks really good if you go out of your way to just not talk to people in, to people in your team but go out of your team and ask everyone else questions because then you'll build up a really good network of people and you'll know exactly who to go to depending on what problems you're having. And this was actually uh, one I really struggled with when I joined HX uh, because I, I wanted to show everyone that was just really good. and. That actually led to me becoming really worried and thinking that I had to know absolutely everything and architecture inside out. And I thought I was doing the right thing by just going home, doing more code or reading things, 
But then I soon realized that this was affecting my working life balance because I'd do work or do coding all day and then go home and do more coding or read about our repositories online. And it wasn't until one of the engineers actually sat here today uh, kind of dragged me out and said, you literally can't know everything. We have so much tech in here and you're going to spend a lot of your time reading a lot of things. But the main thing to take is that there is no point in trying to remember everything and learn everything if you're not going to use all this knowledge and information because you can spend that time um, using that knowledge on things you will actually be doing. And I think that this meme pretty much sums it up. Uh, I hope you liked it because it took me a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but that being said, I'd like to take you through the three big things I've learned here. Uh, the first one is not to worry about getting things wrong. Um, because I felt like the new guy, I was constantly worried about the work I was producing and I thought that people would see me as a fraud or that my decisions were made so badly. And because of my worries, I spent an awful amount of time double and triple checking everything. Sometimes I still do that, but not as much. And I was making sure just, I was sticking to the best coding practices when actually it was more than fine. Just, yeah, I just had to move on and not, not worry about it. Um, but what, you sh what I also took from this is I rarely attempted solutions on my own because of this fear that it might not work or things are different here. And this hindered me to start with. So the thing to take from this is, everyone makes mistakes and they're actually the best way to learn. Um, the second one is not to keep doing things the same way just because they've always been like that. And I did this a lot at first. And it's great to try and um, work on pieces of work in the same way that it was done in the past. But it's also really good to question why are things done the way they're done. Because at, s at some point you might realise going, I've actually got an idea on how we can improve this. And that's when you actually start coming out of your comfort zone and thinking outside the box because it doesn't matter if something's the same, why it becomes boring at some point. So just try something new. And you should also never assume that people know everything here. Sometimes you might know something that a very experienced engineer might not. And that's one of the things that's really good. If you have a voice, learn how to use it because people will never know all your ideas and all the things you can do if you're not, if you're not going to share it with them. And this is actually a very important one and something that I actually stick to every day. Um, comparing yourself to someone is a very bad habit. It can really put you down and even eventually affect your mental health. And I used to get into this routine where I would list a lot of things that people were better than me at and it really knocked my confidence. And the first thing I learned from this is don't do it. Um, <laughs> Because no one expects you to be perfect. We're all different people. We all do, dif do things differently. And that is literally what sets us apart as human beings. And when you're comparing yourself to someone, you start to dismiss your own skills and your own accomplishments. And eventually, you'll start really knocking down this huge confidence that you used to have. So celebrate your accomplishments. You've gained them for a reason. And I was affected a lot by this, where there was a time where I kept on comparing myself to an engineer and I kept on saying, this person's doing a really good piece of work and I'm not doing that. I think I should do a lot more at home now because I need to get to their level. And someone sat here actually saw what was happening with me and they saw that it was affecting my morale. And they took me to the side and they actually said, you need to stop comparing yourself to someone because you can do things that they can't. And that's really good. You have your own accomplishments, you have your positives, you have your negatives. And this time, just think about, you know, this person's doing such a good piece of work. What can I learn from them? What is it that I didn't do well that I can actually improve next time? Um, so that's just to summarise. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. We all make mistakes and improve from, by learning from them. Never feel shy to get involved. Challenge other people's work and share your thoughts because, again, they might, know th they might not know things that you do. And... Never criticise yourself by comparing yourself to others because there's so much to learn out there, then why not just lean on each other? And I'm hoping that a lot of you are probably thinking, wow, this is exactly how I thought. I thought I was the only person who had these thoughts and who was going through this. Well, in this huge world, you're not alone. I've been through this and a lot of people have been through this. And what you need to actually take from this is that we've all crossed that bridge. We all started here. As a new person, and we went through the three months onboarding process, so everyone knows exactly what it's like. It's scary, it's frustrating, 
And one of the ways that we went through this and actually crossed this bridge is by getting other people's support. Sharing your thoughts with others around you and because when you know that you're not alone and reaching out to help, that's when you've actually made a big step. You're actually confirming that you need to speak to someone and share your thoughts. And we're all going through things, whether it's at home or at work. Well-being is a really big part of HX and we have a number of places for this. We have Workplace, we have Slack, you have your one-to-one -one with the manager, or you have casual chats with uh, people in your team. So get out of your fears of not fitting in, find someone and share your thoughts with them because you might even be helping them by telling them about your story. Um, and there's this thing I like to do where if I'm kind of down or I feel like I'm not really in the mood, I like to think that you can help someone else because everybody, that, everyone that you meet is going through something, so you have the opportunity to offer some light into their day. So why not do it? It's actually fun and you'll feel so happy that you've cheered someone up. And then you realize going, oh, I don't know what I was in the mood about earlier on. Um, and how can you actually help someone out? That's right. Um, uh, you, you actually don't need to be an expert to mentor someone. It can be through literally a tiny catch-up or a one-to-one, -one, or even if you're having a chat to someone about something. Find someone and share your thoughts, because what I've realized is when you're teaching someone, you're actually able to retain all the information that you had, and you start realizing, Gary, I had no idea I knew all this stuff, but it, was, it just comes out of your brain. And your confidence will actually increase a lot, because I've had this moment where we had a new jo joiner, we had a new engineer started here, and I was told that I should mentor them. And my reaction was, oh. I was thinking, there's absolutely no way I'm doing this. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. How can I help someone and get them to trust me so I can teach them? Um, but in the end, I thought, do you know what? What's the worst that can happen? If I make a mistake, I could just tell them, well, I'd probably just go, I'm really sorry, and just try to find the answer for them. And I'm sure that this is not just about mentoring, this is about anything else, like if you want to do a project or if you want to apply for a new position at HX. I'm sure a lot of you probably thought, I can't do this, what if it goes wrong? What if I'm not good enough for this? Well, do it! Why not? Oh no. Yeah, do it! Why not? Because if, what if it goes badly? Because then, when you actually throw yourself out into the deep end, you won't regret it because you've already made that first step thinking, I'm gonna do something new today, work on that project that you wanted to do, do this new course you wanted, or apply for this new role. Because in the end, you'll do something great with it, because you're already trying something new, and that's a very big step. And you'll look back at it, and you'll be so happy that you did this. <coughs> Sorry, that you did this. Um, but uh, we always expect things to go right. We, we don't like when things fail. And there may be times when things don't go well. So for example, you've been working on a ticket that was really hard and you've tried everything you could do with it, but you just, it, you felt defeated by it and you you feel so down about it because at times, personally, I think, I don't belong here, I, can't, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And when that happens, literally just get up and go for a walk and just take a step back and reflect, about, reflect on how far you've come because you, all of you here, are here for a reason, you've been chosen for a reason, you're sat here for a reason, because you're really good at what you're doing. So try to not look at the negatives, but look at the positives. Yes, you couldn't do something, but what have you learned from this? What can you do next time? And there is nothing wrong with giving yourself a pat on the back. Not everyone likes to do it, but it helps sometimes. Um, <laughs> um, now, I hope that you've all taken a lot from this, but this actually relates back to the three points that we started off with. Um, and hopefully a lot of you have to start thinking, where were you then? And look at how far you've come. And where can you go next? Because I didn't know this until one of my friends told me. As soon as I list these three points, you'll actually be thinking about these three points for a very long time when you do things. Because it becomes a circle. You're start starting something new, and it's been a couple of months. And then you're looking back at how far you've come when you started this new let's say, position, and then you'll stop thinking, okay, I've taken a big step now, what can I do next? I want to be better. And that's actually one of our key values, be the best version of you. Uh, but this time, you can also take a spin and think of another one. How can you help others who are going through the exact same thing? And this is something that I think is really good because, again, you should always share your ideas and teach one another. 
But if you see someone that is going through the exact same thing that you did, how can you help them? Um, so for example, the engineer who knew that I was having a huge knock in confidence and started really putting myself down. When they saw this, they wanted to help me out. And I feel like one big walk away from this is how can we help others? Like the new IPs or the new engineers starting, what can we do to help them? Like maybe writing documentation or doing workshops or having more one-to-ones. Um, yeah, so before I conclude this talk, I would like to say a massive thank you to everyone sat here. When I joined HX, I felt like I was not worthy enough, that I somehow sneaked in, and that I just wasn't good enough. And I was so scared that one day I'll be discovered, and maybe for an hour. It hasn't happened yet, so I think I'm good. And it actually took a lot of courage for me to stand here and talk about what I went through, but none of this would have happened if it wasn't for everyone here, for all your kindness, your support, um, a lot, basically. <laughs> and I just want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, for making this, for helping me through this journey and for making me into the engineer I am today. Uh, so, thank you again. So for those remotely, uh, Matt Swamy's question was, what did I do that actually helped me a lot more um, when I actually realised that I was doing too much work instead of going home and doing more work? Um, I'm a very big talker. <laughs> I, lo I love to talk to people. <laughs> and this is actually one of the ways it helps me out because I'm, when I'm going through something, I like to talk to people about it and tell them exactly what's going through my head because I feel like if no one knows what your team member's going through, you've already lost that connection because even the road team, eventually you sort of become like a family and you can tell when someone's going through something. So I, I just like to be very open about what I'm going through. And I actually got a very, sometimes I ask people for tough love because I could be given advice and I just not take any of the advice and I still carry on being down. Um, so it, yeah. Maybe a bit of tough love can help, but eventually, I just thought one day it just clicked, and I thought, I think I think I'm doing well. I've been here for a while now, so I don't think you know I'm doing things wrong. <laughs> and now when I go home, I just put my laptop down sometimes, um, <laughs> um, and I just try not to think about anything. But I think it's the socialness here because HX is a, a very nice. You can be very social with people here and that can really help you even outside of work because you start to forge really good friendships and everyone will start to help you out. Even, even when you don't need help, some people will actually try to help you out. Um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> um, any other questions? Uh, Luke? If you could go back to day one, what would you do differently? I would calm down. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, because it is really hard for someone who's new, and I'm guessing everyone who started here have always felt nervous. But yeah, if I was to go back in time, I'd actually start being calm and try to listen to people more. Because I've been giving so much advice to take a step back and relax, and I don't do it. I carry on being stressed. <laughs> um, that's what I do. If, uh, Louis? Yeah, so this is from Hannah on the remote call. Um, similar to Luke's question. What's the most vital piece of advice you would give to this year's IP's intake. Um, do you want me to repeat the question? Uh, should be fine. Yeah, okay. Um, the, wow, that's a big one. I'd say, well, I think I've spoken to a lot of IP's for this year as well. Um, on your first day, I think just take it easy. Do not wear a suit. <laughs> uh, you'll be boiling. <laughs> um, yeah, take, it, take small steps. Uh, you'll get a lot of information, but you're not expected to literally come out the next day being a pro. Um, I'm still not a pro, and it's on a, almost been a year. Um, 
so take your time to learn things and if you think you're struggling don't sort of be quiet about it do go to someone and speak to them you don't have to say you know like vertically in front of everyone but ask for a one-to-one -one chat because you have your tech mentors as well and your manager so you have two people you can lean on and eventually you might actually become closer to with your team and feel like they understand you a bit more they're literally the same person as you are so when you share your feelings with them you can help one another and I'd say make it make the most out of your year here you're going to have so much fun and <laughs> Any other questions? Ben, hello. Uh, what do you think your biggest uh, takeaway from your year here would be when you go back to uni? By that I mean non-tech related, not work related. Yeah. Just being in the office, what do you think your biggest takeaway will be? Um, <laughs> that, I hope this answers it, but things aren't bad as you, expect, as you think they are. Um, I'm a person who likes to overthink a lot. I'm sure many of you know that already. <laughs> um, so when someone, or in my case, when five people tell you that it's fine, it's actually fine. <laughs> um, that's why I think one of the biggest takeaways is um, it's good to share your thoughts. And this is one of the things with the HX, you, because uh, well-being is a huge part of it. You start to realise how to actually communicate more or find ways where you can de-stress yourself, like paddle tennis court thing. Or foosball. Foosball, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that would be one of my biggest takeaways from here. Any other questions? Sorry? Yeah, it's not entirely a similar question, but if you have to pick like a single moment from your time here, yeah, like the, the standout moment that was your favourite, and that doesn't have to necessarily be like a coding thing, but like any single moment, like what's the, what's the best bit so far? Um, so for those remotely, uh, so that Matt told me just asked, what is my, I think I'm paraphrasing, most favourite moment from what I've done here? Oh, oh there are a lot of them. <laughs> um, I think making this big decision I had to make. Um, after I passed my onboarding, I had to think about joining a new pod. And that was a very scary decision I had to make because I thought, I don't really know what I'm doing, and moving on to a new team, I won't know what I'm doing again. But I spoke to an engineer here, I hope I can name drop for them, uh, I will, Sam Smart. Um, I spoke to a lot of pods, and I wanted to know which team that I want to join, and Hates Hotels and Car Park are the, is, was the team I picked, and that was my, I think, favourite moment, because I made such a good decision even though for the first month that was, I thought it was a bad decision. <laughs> um, it's because I, I actually grew a lot more during my time there. I learned so much and I actually became a better person because I realised I actually mentored someone and I'm an IP. Like, yeah. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Um, and that was, I think, my most favourite moment when I knew that I was actually good enough to teach someone else. It's my favourite moment. There are other ones, but we'd be here for a long time if I'm listening now. <laughs> right. Yes? Looking back on what you know now, is there anything which you did prepare for which you wish you had? Um, so for those remotely, the question was, looking back at it now, is there anything I wish I prepared for? Yep. Um, yes. I, well, okay. I, <laughs> I had, my knowledge with JavaScript was abysmal. I only, knew, I only learned it in university, where you learn things from a textbook. And that's one of the regrets I kind of had, because when I joined here, although I learned everything from scratch, I feel like it would have been really good to have a better knowledge of the languages we use here. Um, that was one of my regrets, but then it became a positive, because you don't really know what you're actually going to be doing from that move from uni to uh, the working life because you're, you're making assignments, let's say, you're changing the colour of a box at uni and then when you're actually in a company like HX, you're actually dealing with actual products and people will be using what you're making. And so that, I would say that was one of the things I, look, I wish I looked back on, just having a bit more, more knowledge because I was so scared on that job. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah.
Any other questions? No? All good.